Yo, I've gotten some emails from an organization called the Change.org team. I'll quote them here. From November of 2018, will Happy make history? In a historical decision for elephants, Happy has been granted a writ of habeas corpus. This order means that Tracy Bannister of the Orleans County Supreme Court will rule if Happy is a legal person. The Non-Human Rights Project has secured this precedent-setting ruling using the evidence that Happy is cognitively complex and self-aware. She is the first documented elephant to demonstrate this capacity through a mirror self-recognition test. However, other animals have passed this test. See the YouTube video, Curious Cat Discovers She Has Ears While Striking Pose in Mirror. As Stephen Wise, president of the Non-Human Rights Project, addressed to the court, it's wrong to treat them as if they're basic inanimate beings. They are autonomous beings. They are extraordinarily cognitively complex and ought to have fundamental legal rights that protect these fundamental cognitive characteristics. If the judge rules in Happy's favor, the isolated Bronx Zoo elephant will be retired to a sanctuary and become the first animal with, at the very least, a basic legal definition of personhood. From August 2019, Petition Update, Summer Progress for Happy. On the weekend before World Elephant Day, the Non-Human Rights Project hosted a second rally at the Bronx Zoo to fight for Happy the Elephant's release to sanctuary. The event featured in Newsweek was attended by dozens of advocates from across the city and helped to further elevate the campaign to a national audience. And the fight keeps gaining momentum. More than one million animal lovers have signed the petition to free Happy, and the Non-Human Rights Project has scheduled a Bronx County court date on September 23rd to secure Happy's habeas corpus hearing to argue for her fundamental rights. From February 2020, breaking decision in Happy the Elephant's case. Last week, Justice Allison Tewitt of the Bronx Supreme Court issued a decision in the Non-Human Rights Project's case on behalf of Happy that is powerfully supportive of the NHRP's legal arguments to free Happy from the Bronx Zoo to an elephant sanctuary. While Justice Tewitt denied habeas corpus relief, the NHRP demanded, because she felt bound by prior appellate court decisions in the NHRP's chimpanzee rights cases, she essentially vindicated the legal arguments and factual claims about the nature of non-human animals such as Happy that the, the NHRP has been making during the first six years of our rights litigation, said Happy's lead attorney and NHRP President Stephen Wise. In her analysis and conclusion, Justice Atuit agreed with New York Court of Appeals Justice Eugene Fahey's conclusion that an elephant like a chimpanzee is not merely a thing. Happy is an intelligent, autonomous being who should be treated with respect and dignity and who may be entitled to liberty. Further, Justice Stewart rejected the Bronx Zoo's claim that its continued imprisonment of Happy is good for her, stating that the arguments advanced by the NHRP are extremely persuasive for transferring Happy from her solitary, lonely exhibit at the Bronx Zoo to the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. Deeply encouraged by Justice Tewitt's embrace of the merits of the NHRP's case following 13 hours of oral argument over three days, the NHRP has already begun working on its appeal. In another petition update, the NHRP noted that they were sickened to have learned that their elephant client, uh, Beulah, died from blood poisoning caused by a uterine infection. The Commerford Zoo was aware of this when they forced her to travel from Connecticut to Massachusetts to be exhibited for their financial gain. Blood poisoning, known as septicemia, causes intense suffering no matter your species. A sad end. End of email quotes. Now, although people have consistently denied non-human animals their rights, many have, in great contradiction, held them to human responsibilities. For example, an elephant named Mary, born in 1894, was put to work in the Sparks world-famous show Circus. In 1916, after her trainer poked her behind the ear with a hook, she, she went wild and killed him. Onlookers began chanting, Kill the elephant! Let's kill it! So the circus owner arranged for the elephant to be hanged by the neck from a derrick. 
The first attempt resulted in a snap chain causing Mary to, to fall and break her hip. The second attempt killed her. After the hanging, a veterinarian examined Mary's body and determined that she had a severely infected tooth in the precise spot where her trainer prodded her with the hook. Numerous other non-human animals have been tried for various crimes. At one time, a special suit and tie were tailor-made for a hippopotamus to wear so he could look presentable in court. The judge found him guilty of murder and he was executed. In 1903, Thomas Edison had Topsy the elephant electrocuted to help demonstrate the dangers of alternating current, which his rival Nikolai Tesla advocated. Edison continued his campaign involving electrocuting animals. Stray dogs and cats were the most easily obtained, but he also needlessly killed cattle and horses. In the end, all Edison had to show for his efforts was some dead animals. His direct current became unpopular as Tesla's alternating current demonstrated superiority in most cases to become the standard. And Edison did not invent the light bulb. That was Joseph uh, W. Swan. Uh, and if you yourself are part of this rottenness of humanity, do whatever you can to rid yourself of your poisonous attitude and change your life around. Or you might be interested in contributing financially to helping needy animals and or supporting their causes via signing petitions on their behalf. Petitions and causes are found on the website change.org. Please check it out.